Hey, what's going on, you guys? Super Chill Fitness here. All right, so for my third or I guess second obligatory video of the week, we're gonna move on to what I eat for my diet. Okay, so but let's go go through each one of these foods and and uh, explain. This is a diet that you might be able to follow if you find that other diets tend to be too extreme. Other bro diets. Now, this is a bro diet for all intents and purposes. But it's not like super bro -y. This is not uh, a diet that I would have if you want to step onto a bodybuilding uh, stage. This is not a diet that's going to keep you, uh, get you super, super shredded. But it is a diet that you might be able to follow all year round. Let me explain. First staple uh, uh, protein that I have comes from fit and active plain yogurt. And in each of these containers is 40 grams of protein. I down pretty much three quarters of this uh, every single time I make a shake. I make a shake inside this unit here. This attaches to this. It's a two-piece blender and I've spoken at, in detail in a separate video about the importance of having a two-piece blender over a three-piece blender. A blender that essentially you have to screw and then turn upside down. You do not want that. You simply want a blender that you take the top and connect it to the bottom and then you press the power button and you're ready to go. So you with the yogurt that I put into the shake, I add three items, or really two or three items. It's either some oatmeal I'll add to the yogurt, or uh, I will add some oats to the yogurt, right? Uh, these are steel-cut Irish oats, right? Right. The, the oatmeal, uh, I always go with the one-minute quick because you don't really want to be digesting stuff that's not 100% cooked. Which is why I probably shouldn't go pour these uh, the steel cut out straight in, but I do anyway, just for the heck of it, because it doesn't really give me a problem. Unless I have it at night, which it does give me a problem. So for those of you with easy uh, stomachs that you know uh, are a subject, maybe you're gluten intolerant or something, I would suggest definitely going with the one minute quick stuff to pour it in um, over the regular oatmeal. Uh, also, I pour in. Uh, after I'm done pouring either the oats or the oatmeal, I'll pour in the berries or the strawberries, depending on what I'm feeling. So into the yogurt, which uh, is with the oatmeal and the Irish oats, depending on which one I want. And I follow the, that up with two packets of Splenda. Now, it's, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm pretty much, we're not married to one specific combination for this shake. The second one is I go for eggs and I actually go for four or five eggs at a time um, and I'll just cook them and the trick with making good eggs is to turn the fire off before they're done and let the remaining heat from the pan cook the eggs the rest of the way. That's a killer tip, bro tip right there um, for making good eggs every single time. Don't forget to add your spices and your salts. I have milk as a staple in my diet as well. I, I could pour in milk with some, with some strawberries and, and some, uh, and some oatmeal, maybe some Irish oats, some berries and some milk. It doesn't really matter. So these four ingredients that I'm holding right here are basically interchangeable in any fraction. And that's basically what I'm trying to get forward to you guys. Next, uh, like I said, I have lots and lots of tuna. I, ha I eat plain tuna from the can all the time. It might be uh, a little bit concerned with getting too much mercury. That's why you want to go with chunk light. And this way you can eat this stuff. New studies just recently came out. You can pretty much eat this stuff a lot more often than those environmentalists would have you believe. Because you got people out there claiming you're going to get like too much mercury in your tuna. Well, that's just simply not the case. You, you, you know, I've been having this stuff every single day. No ill effects whatsoever. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Well, what I do do uh, for the chunk light tuna, which is the only type of tuna I'll get because it's the lowest content of mercury, I'll get myself a squeezer. See, this is a squeegee over here, little uh, presser, strainer, and you put it on here and you press down, and then this way you can get all that extra liquid from inside, all that contaminated liquid that's inside the can and separate it from the actual tuna. So whatever mercury there is in there, you can further lessen it by sort of straining it out and pushing this press on there. Very, very nice tool this is. Extremely nice. It also allows you to make where if you're trying to eat this plain, which a lot of times if I'm on the road in my trucks, I go ahead and I'll just press this down 
I'll have one of my guys press it down for me, and then I'll just eat it out with a fork, and that, that's good for on the go. Just make sure you have a nice big old bottle of water next to you when you do it, because it can make your mouth pretty dry. Another thing, uh, my staple, if, I want, if I'm hungry and I want a snack, I reach for uh, good old-fashioned rice cakes. And I do go with the caramel rice cakes. Why? Because this diet is supposed to be a diet that you can maintain year in and year out. And I think just for at least me, my purposes, when it comes to plain rice cakes, I just can't eat that all year round. I just can't do it. Um, they have uh, apple, cinnamon. They have um, some of the others, uh, tomato. Uh, they have like different flavors of rice cakes. So I'll just, if I get sick of one flavor of rice cakes, I'll move on to the next flavor of rice cakes. This season happens to be caramel corn cakes because that's what was on sale and that's what was at Aldi. So then there's that. Um, and finally, of course, you got to get yourself a protein powder. Now, I'm not a big fan of protein powders because I feel that they can jack up the numbers on the side of the label. They can tell you, well, each serving is a 40, uh, 30 grams or 25 grams of protein per scoop. And a lot of times I find that that's just not, doesn't seem to be the case. Because I feel like when it comes to getting my protein in, I feel like I've built a lot more muscle by having these guys. And over here it says... Your serving size is 2, and there's 11 grams of protein per serving. That comes up to 22 grams per can, and it means 22 grams per can, whereas the, uh, uh, the protein powder, a lot of times, they'll jack up their numbers, and they'll tell you you're getting 25 or 30 grams when you're really not. You might be getting 15 or even 10. They can really screw things up like that. They can really lie to you, and I just... I'd just rather not take the risk. So that's why I'm not a big protein powder guy. That's why this particular batch of protein powder has been sitting on my on my desk over here for the past, I don't know, month or so or longer. And I only go through it. I only get one of these if I'm really in a rush. Like if I'm really on the go halfway out the door and I just need to grab something, I'll whip this up with some milk and I'll run out the door just like that. Other than that, this is not what I go for. Uh, finally, finally, the last... Uh, uh, ingredient, if you will. A lot of times I put this with my tuna. A lot of times I put a spread on here, some low calorie spread, maybe some low calorie cream cheese. Um, is 12 grain bread, not whole wheat, not you know, not sesame seed, not, and none of that. 12 grain. I mean, you got all 12 grains. The more grains, the better. But I go for 12 grain bread. That's really important. Um, <clears throat> and that is really, really filling. One of these slices is only 100 calories, and it fills you up. It goes a long way in filling you up. You have two of these slices, you're like, okay, I'm done. Now, I don't need any more food for, like, the rest of the day is pretty much the feeling you're going to have after you have these two slices. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be this brand. This is just the brand I go with. Because, once again, it's where I shop. Um, and all this stuff... I got an Aldi, so it's all fairly cheap and inexpensive. And this is what I pretty much eat year in, uh, month after month, all year round. Once you start getting down a good diet, you'll notice that your skin will be better. Uh, now, whether that's scientifically proven or not, I don't care. I can tell you right now that when I'm on my game and I'm eating the foods that I need to be eating, like I was about a month ago, uh, I feel better. My brain function is higher. I am just, uh, my complexion is better. And even right now, like I'm able to do this video and be really sharp because I've actually already had one of these and I'm already pretty much back on my diet as of today. So I already got that extra boost of energy out of the way. Um, I can't tell you how important it is to get a whole foods diet like this one. It doesn't have to be a bro diet. You don't only have to eat chicken breast or egg whites for the rest of your life. Yeah, sure, if you want shredded six-pack abs and you know and 3d delts yeah maybe you might have to go that extra level but if you're just trying to be in shape like so many of us are right just at a healthy body fat percentage shirt off you got some lines in your abs then all you need to do is go ahead and just get this right once you get this right then you know so much will fall into place so to wrap up this video the whole message is it doesn't really matter what you eat necessarily all that matters is that it's their whole food. So over the course of my life, these foods will change. So that's just what I'm eating right now. 
It's important not to get closed off and closed minded and narrow minded to one specific food because you're just going to get bored and frustrated and annoyed by your diet and then you're just going to go off your diet. The whole point of this is to be able to maintain it year in, year round. So you maintain a healthy shape and a healthy body throughout your life. And you're not doing yourself any favors if you lock yourself down to a specific food choice. Um, so once again, as long as they're whole foods, I even ran by somebody who said, I don't eat anything with a label. Now, I wouldn't go that to that extreme, but I understood what he meant. And I think maybe you can too. That's pretty much a good mantra to go by. I don't have anything with a label. I don't eat anything with a label. In other words, I think what he meant to say is I don't eat anything that's processed. And with that, I'm going to let you think about that for a little bit and I'll see you guys all next time.